Bow Wow. Welcome to Dog Star. Each week we sit down with a star of hip hop and R and B, and this week we have Gabriella Jacobs in the building. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. How are you guys today? Doing very well. Thank you so much for coming through. We know you you spin many plates, you wear many hats, and <laughs> we appreciate you taking the time to talk with us. Yeah, we feel very very lucky to have you. We want to jump right in though to your origin story, like hop in the time machine. Obviously doing a lot nowadays, but yeah, were you uh were you born in Minnesota? Are you a Minnesota? Yeah, so I'm a Northeast Minneapolis girly. <laughs> um, I grew up in Northeast Minneapolis and then St. Anthony Village, actually. Okay. So just kind of the border of uh, Northeast Minneapolis. Well, who was controlling the radio or who was playing music uh, as far back as you can remember in those early years? Yeah, so my dad actually was really just um, like well... Um, like known in the community as far as Northeast goes, because we actually grew up um, at St. Charles Borromeo. So he actually sang like at our Catholic church growing up. Okay. So with that, um, I saw him sing for many weddings, funerals, like all you can think of. Wow. But what really like lit a fire in me was um, he actually got cancer when I was seven, mm. but he continued to sing on oxygen. 24 7 like still doing what he loved until he passed when i was 15 so my gosh that i think seeing someone you know really like care about their community want to be a part of those special moments in life um really set a fire in my heart to be like my dad can do it like and be in pain i what's gonna stop me i want to be like that i want to do that you know so yeah what uh, i mean a harrowing story to say the least but an inspirational one i think Mm -hmm. to take away from yeah so that was yeah i wanted to be with dad like right by his side while he's singing and stuff and was church your then introduction kind of into music whether it be choir or it's interesting because that and then i had two older sisters so I got like a little MP3 player that had Kanye's workout plan on it, <laughs> you know. So there's that, and I'm like, oh, they can't. No one listening to this. Don't tell anyone. Right. <laughs> but like, you know, so on the low, I'm listening to some other stuff. But then, yeah, I would say like definitely, like just seeing my dad and do music so like prevalently in the community really was the main like core for sure. What era was that MP3? At what age would, oh, do gosh. you think you were? Around like. Eight, nine, okay, ten. Okay. So like becoming I, a conscious individual. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I mean, yeah. As far as like inspo, though, anywhere from Michael Jackson to Lauren Hill to Michael Bublé to Metallica to Van Sevenfold. Like honestly, my sisters listen to screamo, to hip hop, to really anything, and then my family also. So yeah. Kind of a mixture of things. But. That's awesome. And then in our research, we found that you were on like SoundCloud in 2013 and YouTube in like 2011. So like yeah. you've been posting music for a while. Yeah, it's been a part of your life for a long time. Yeah. How did you, well, I guess I want to find like the beginning of that. So like, were you writing songs first? Oh, yeah. I've been writing since I was like seven years old. My first song was about like a frog, some leapfrog like poem turned it into me like, oh, yeah, like, let's go. <laughs> you know, so hit. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I always I've been playing pianos by ear since I was like five. I named my family after each note. So that's how I would like <laughs> correlate the sound was this one's Anna. This one's Nicole. <laughs> like, so uh, from there, yeah, I've kind of so I don't know music theory through production. I'm slowly correlating everything together mm-hmm. and learning it, which is awesome with technology. But yeah, so that kind of too, I've always just, I think, been super like a like it's always called to me <laughs> and yeah. been special so. in the back of your mind do you still uh call those notes <laughs> the, the family. family members names um no but... or maybe accidentally be like oh no the, you know that's a g <laughs> yeah, oh, i mean <laughs> yeah, yeah. um no i don't think so but like definitely like as a kid of course like kind of developing like your own learning and like understanding of it so and does that mean you didn't take formal piano lessons and therefore never did like a piano recital i did do piano lessons but i always was paying attention to the patterns and the sound on the keys not the writing i still couldn't focus on the writing i would watch my piano teacher play and then i would just copy her like placements and patterns um 
Like, but my parents did also send me to like the Yamaha School of Music when I was like six for like a couple months. So they actually, (laughs) their primary focus was learning by ear. So like just kids that are kind of like interested and intuitive and have interest, like honing in on that skill of just kind of intuition more so actually the music theory. So I think that's cool that that's out there. I hope Yamaha is still doing that. That would be so awesome to see. Like, I think that's like another way of learning for sure in itself. That's cool. Yeah. Anything else in school, like attributing to your music career and like media career, I guess, before you started uh, dropping on SoundCloud and YouTube? Um, I would always play like in my choir classes, like play the piano and show them songs I wrote. <laughs> and Ooh, actually, wow. so like I went to St. Anthony High School, which my choir teacher there was like, yeah, like, let's show the class. I was like, OK, I'm like nervous. But like he, you know, was encouraging to get me comfortable with actually doing that and then also at irondale like the teacher there always like let kids come in after school and play so like i would utilize that and like before choir concerts so i was in choir and like i'd always be like look at this new song i made and people (laughs) like my friends at the time would give me like the time so i appreciate that too you know that goes a long way especially at that age for people to be around you and like supportive so yeah was it a nice kind of like ease into like getting a larger and larger crowd then because i know for some people it's like all right this is my first time ever being in front of like anybody and it happens to be like 50 people and like yeah that feels intense i think so like i think my first like real performance was at fine line actually um AK uh, had booked the show, if you know who AK is. So he actually got me really, like, into the music scene here. So that first show, though, I was shaking in my boots. Like, Mm. I didn't, I was, like, thinking I didn't know the lyrics, but, like, my, actually, my friend Kaya was in the front row, like, standing there and, like, mouthing it with me. And, like, I think, like, when, yeah, like, just thinking back to, like, some of those earlier days and, like, coming through, it's, like, those people that were there to support me, like, gave me that confidence and courage to be like, yes, okay, let's go. We can do it. (laughs) Like, so. Totally. And then bringing it back again to this early SoundCloud and YouTube dropping, that was before that show, I assume? Yeah, yeah. So what was like dropping music, like making it public, even if it's not in front of somebody? For sure. That was through high school. So like as far as like the stuff on YouTube, I think like once Justin Bieber started like becoming popular on mm, YouTube, right. I was like, I'm going to put some stuff into the world. So it was around that time, like, you know, when YouTube kind of became popular, right. this kind of was like, I'm sitting here playing the piano, like I'm, I'm doing it all the time. I would mm-hmm. love to like share it with the world. So. So it was more high school stuff. but I did want to ask what you were doing for, like, a camera back then or what you were doing for, like, how'd you learn that you could, you're saying Justin Bieber kind I of? I used Splice, actually, to chop up all wow. of my video work back, like, in that time. So Splice at the time wasn't, like, samples and all of the things it is now, mm. which has grown into, obviously, probably over the years. But it was, like, just the video editing software. They would even put, like, Splice place at the end of the videos like tiktok does you know oh, like wow. splice <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> like, no it's like tiktok right. <laughs> follow me here but like yeah so that's like i found that app i was just kind of curious i just had a little iphone like probably the first gen iphone i think when it came out so well then what were you using for like recording your audio or my phone so oh, just wow. laying over an instrumental yeah, yeah. Okay. so any videos on youtube is all my phone okay. and soundcloud early soundcloud too before like anything with like another person on there yeah we're talking around yeah 2013 2014 yeah so all phone yeah, yeah that's pretty inspirational to hear that you were doing it on the phone Seriously. and able to get your videos on YouTube and your songs on SoundCloud. Mm-hmm. Um, was was I was going to ask if that from even that age felt cathartic or what did your nerves overwhelm maybe any value you saw at the time? I think I am like definitely a shy person okay. and like I definitely like Part of actually that time era, like, that changed my perspective. I think at that time, I really wanted to, like, 
have all the bells and whistles like I want to make it everybody like I want to fly to LA I'd cry to my mom like I just need to be in LA I know I can do this like strategizing at an early age like I just need to be here and like I know I can do this Mm -hmm. and then I kind of actually watched the Amy Winehouse documentary where she said I would trade my voice for a day on the street to be a normal person and go get groceries like just be a normal person on the street and that to my skin still like I have like goosebumps like the fact that someone would take some gift that you know they're given and want to give it away because they have that much pressure from the world around them like is why I feel like I'm moving the way I am now in the industry which was at a young age too so yeah it was kind of like my perspective on that so like as far as uploading I think at first when those came out I was like yeah I want to just like make it I want to be famous everybody (laughs) like look at me like (laughs) I can do all this stuff and now I'm like that really humbled me when I was like 15 Mm -hmm. you know around the time my dad passed away too I saw Mm -hmm. that documentary so it all at that time really made me realize like the greater value of creating and like sharing that with the world and how that resonates versus what you can gain back from the world around you, if that makes sense. So yeah. no, wonderfully put. <laughs> yeah, that's a, a wild lesson to learn so early on. Um, For sure. And then, uh, yeah, sorry, uh, brain fart here. <laughs> um so you're doing a bunch of covers for those who don't know about your yeah. early, the, er, the early <laughs> days, right? The you 10, can thousand find, hours. You can find them if you look hard right. enough. For now, <laughs> playing the piano. <laughs> yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Playing guitar. There's a track. Yeah. Do you I, play guitar as well? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'd gotten a guitar when I was younger. It had broken strings, though. Like, mm. actually, a lot of those had bo- broken strings. <laughs> I just was working with the tools I had, yeah. and I was grateful to have the tools, <laughs> even if it was a little you know broken it worked for me it wasn't it wasn't really broken i just had to get a little creative i was gonna say a a true artist will use the tools they have for sure so and so yeah phone and then publishing online um that the computers were just like available at the time for you to be doing that it was all like my phone for sure. That's I had a phone lot. early because with my dad being sick, he mm. was treated actually at the Mayo Clinic like most of my life. So okay, wow. from traveling back and forth, they lived down there for a little bit too um, when I was in fourth grade. So I think um, having a phone was a very early thing for me and privilege to have. Like mm-hmm. I had a little Nokia with 100 minutes, you know, but it was so my parents could communicate with me. So of course, yeah, as, like, technology had evolved, the new iPhone came out, like, I got the iPhone, whatever plan they had, I was able to get it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think I just utilized having that. We didn't have a computer or any of those other resources. Mm-hmm. It was just, like, my phone, which, yeah. That's and amazing. Then, yeah, the power of creativity, truly. And then where on the timeline did you start, like, getting production equipment or like start producing on software like when where does that come into yeah for sure so um honestly like my ex had gotten some music equipment when Mm. we were together over the last like several years when we were together um and him kind of like having the capability to like have it like he was working a good job obviously music equipment is not cheap y'all it's expensive so He made the investment in it, um, you know, let me use it. So that was like the start of me getting more familiar. But I had GarageBand actually um, on a laptop that my sister gave me actually around like later that time too. Um, So, yeah, I think just kind of was interested from GarageBand for sure here and there on my sister's computer when she'd be home from college. Like, oh, Mm. that's kind of interesting. So here and there it always was like... And then I do piano. I mean, I play piano and guitar. Mm -hmm. So it's like being able to put your composition together. Yeah. I was like, I need to be able to do this. So now I'm, it's been six years since I started using Ableton though. So. Whoa. And are you still learning new tips and tricks every day? So you wouldn't consider yourself. uh... No, I think we're always learning new tricks and tips every day because like us as humans are always evolving and so is everything like the industry everything around us technology so i think especially with ai like some of these plugins will do the work for you for mixing so Mm. 
I think there's always something new to learn and how to be innovative. In yeah, leadership. do you have any tips for somebody who might want to like either put their music out there or like get into like making music more seriously? Or even choose a DAW. Or like, yeah, yeah, advice you would give yourself? I would say choose a DAW. Um, pirating it, I wouldn't pirate it. I'm not going to tell you otherwise, you know, some people out there, but I would be careful about that. I would really just... Like, for instance, Ableton will let you do payment plans. I think that's a big advancement as far as, like, a DAW provider. Um, so I would recommend getting Ableton. Try it out for free for three months. They actually do, a f like, a free 90-day trial. We're not getting paid. We're not getting yeah, paid. Yeah, we're not getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> this is not an ad, everybody. But I would do the free trial. Get to know Ableton. And then if you can afford it... Um, do a monthly payment plan for Ableton, just like we would for anything else we buy. Fast food, you know, clothes online, Amazon. Yeah, budget yeah. it out. Just, I would just prioritize it. If you want to do it, just prioritize that. And then be willing to learn from other people, like, and take constructive criticism would be my biggest tip because... That's how I've learned for sure. <laughs> um, Have you always been good at like taking constructive criticism? Or? Absolutely not. No, <laughs> okay, absolutely okay. not. No, I mean, still some, you know, of course, we're all like emotional beings. It's just being in that wise mind, you know, when mm. you're working with other people um, in any industry, like going to a day job during the day, you know, it's like. I know I respect my manager. As long as there's respect there, I feel like I would, you know, of course, respect anything that person's going to say to me mm. and try to get on their level. Um, I think sometimes my feelings get hurt if someone is like a different type of energy that I'm not compatible with, mm, though I will okay. still show that person like the utmost respect because... We're all going through things like mm -hmm. <laughs> everyone deserves. No one really knows what anyone's going through. So, like, I think... I still sometimes get sensitive if someone's like, oh, yeah, this needs work. But, you know, it's usually the type of people that you can tell they didn't take the time to listen or like mm -hmm. more that I'll get frustrated mm -hmm. if I feel like the energy is not uh, reciprocated in the no, same that, time. That makes total sense and understandable. You're yeah. an artist, you <laughs> know, yeah. you, you yeah. live I so close. Respect. Yeah. Like, I respect you. Just treat me nicely. Talk to me nicely. <laughs> Verbiage matters. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, for real, for you real. know, so. Oh, man. Well, we got to take a break here shortly. Uh, we're sitting down with Gabriella Jacobs. You can follow her on Instagram, indigo underscore onyx, I-N-D-I-G-O underscore O-N-Y-X-X. -X. Mm -hmm. And that's where you can find the production and the music, the, your vocalist as well. Yeah, check out her SoundCloud, Gabriella Jacobs. Yep. <laughs> um, while you're at it during the break, you can check out Media 2.8, 2.8 Collective, or your favorite producer, artist duo and that'll keep you busy we'll see you after the mm -hmm. break follow us dog star <laughs> podcast we'll be right back bye hey. wow <laughs> wow wow welcome back to dog star we are sitting down with Gabriella Jacobs, the producer, vocalist, DJ, cinematographer, extraordinaire. Philanthrop philanthropist, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> yeah, visionary. Sure. A&R, I mean, it's, it's impressive. For sure, a I appreciate A, a multi-hyphenate, to say the least. Uh, sure. Before the break, we were talking about kind of leveling up the equipment in your uh, trajectory. Did you ever, uh, like, upgrade the video equipment? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, as I've, you know, the last few years have progressed, um, no longer with that ex. So, so no, right. We'll get that X, out of the way. X, but, X means X, yeah. you know, appreciate all that he did, whatever, you know, to help me with that equipment at the time. Uh, but I did invest in my own equipment, you know, got to the point where I saved up to invest in my own equipment. Mm. Um, so, you know, I bought a PC from Micro Center, saved up, bought a PC, and then I... Got a blue baby bottle mic I had been wanting since my early production mm. days. It was just, you know, it's probably not even what's hip or what to use right now. But I've been, yeah. I've, I was like, I wanted this for so long. I can finally have it. You know, worked <laughs> hard, saved up. Cool. Got it. So then, you know, I've, I like, you know, have had my own equipment at home. So with that, you know, I have that privilege at home to work on anything whenever I want to spend the time doing it. So it sounds like you really prefer it that way. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> what what for you does producing and like recording at home do that like 
going somewhere? Like, what are the, what are the benefits to you? Um, the benefits to me are creating your own environment. So, eighty mm. percent of you know our emotional state and like how we feel as a human being during the day is because of our environment. So, when it comes down to like what goals I want to achieve as far as like me as my person. I think I could best achieve that is when I can control my own environment at home. Awesome. Well put. No, something that's so easily overlooked, especially in artistry. It's, you know, we're going to cram you into the space with a bunch of strangers. So immediately make something beautiful. Yeah. You know, versus, <laughs> yeah, being, having your the home field advantage to yeah. use a sports reference. For sure. Like a little like brief thing with that too, though. Um, I was actually hit by an XL truck in 2021, um, a distracted driver Holy moly. on oh Highway gosh. 7. So I'm lucky to be alive. Like, it definitely changed my world. I have a head injury since then. So that's a huge role. I actually was in PT and OT for over a year and was out of work, actually, for over six months as well. Oh, my gosh. Um, were you, were you, sorry to interrupt, were you yeah, able to create during I that wasn't. time at all? Oh, my I gosh. I actually was not able to make music for, you know, especially during COVID, like a really tough time, which is why I picked up photography and videography. Mm. So that's actually that moment. So like, I guess back to the accident, like he was distracted, unfortunately, admitted fault, though, took full accountability. My car, like my back seat wasn't existent. My car seat was broken in half. Oh it happened gosh. on my dad's nine year death anniversary. Just like some weird things like yeah. it happened on my lunch break at work. Um, a lot of that was just like crazy. But I walked out of it. Don't remember anything. I was mm -hmm. like a walking being like 10 second Tom, unfortunately, mm -hmm. oh for uh, that whole day. But you know, I think that like changed a lot of my perspective to having that occur because I physically had to find a new norm. Mm. Um, but I still had all these creative outlets I needed to get out, especially yeah. with trauma, like in us as beings, we need that artist like creative outlook to get through some of those tough things. So I picked up photography, my network of, of course, doing music since, you know, we all did shows together. Yeah. They like had my back no one knew about the accident this is the first time i'm talking about yeah. it actually didn't post it on social so no one knows about this actually but um with that too like oh my gosh i'm lo losing my train of thought no no <laughs> but, worries we really appreciate you yeah. sharing these very uh, personal experiences i think that like also just yeah it just played a lot of role into like me realizing how important like life is the environment all those things that like you take for granted too. So, but with the head injury, the environment thing, I can't, I can't really function in certain environments too anymore to a mm, degree because right. sensory overload a lot of the time. So, if pe people just are patient with me, though, definitely like I can. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's just sometimes it's just yeah. Uh, you had just mentioned, you know, uh, you know how precious life was after that moment. Can can you give any listeners perhaps a uh, I don't want to say a slap in the face, but yeah, um, I mean, what what's what is there to value about life and creativity? I think like something actually a quote I recently found in a sample I used for like an instrumental was, you know, like and this will ring true. I'll bring this back in. But the quote was, um, you know, I'd rather fail trying to accomplish something great then try to accomplish nothing and fully succeed. Mm. Um, and something about that also coincides with those feelings because it really just made me realize, like, I could go home from this interview and not make it home. <laughs> and what what is left of my legacy? I want to live my dad's legacy. I want to create my own legacy, you know? Mm. My footprint is all that I have left of my being. So from there, I just started releasing on SoundCloud or uh, <laughs> on Instagram, all my beats. You know, I just like, I'm like, let's go. Like, I'm just like, what? No time to waste. Yeah. 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 So, like, the goal with that is like, I just want to connect more with people, have that authenticity of life. Like, these interactions are important to me. All of that, like, from that. So I think I just have more care and regard for like, relationships too and like what i spend my time on and who with and all those things so 
That's totally. huge. Um, you were talking, this was kind of the time you got at least back into the videography and photography. Mm -hmm. What was kind of, what, uh, what were you like really into when you first started doing that again? Yeah. So like when I was growing up, I had like a Nikon camera. My mom got me for Christmas the year wow. after my dad passed. Actually, when we were in Duluth, she like surprised me with it. So I had that over the years of different struggles. I sold it to have food on my plate at yeah. the table. So, you know, it was always something I was like, I wish mm. I didn't. That's the one thing I wish I didn't let go of because I loved it still. You know, I was just interested in it. My sister did photography when I was younger okay. in college and things. So I was exposed to it a little bit. My mom is, hey, everybody, cheese, like documenting oh, yeah. everything. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I was like always kind of like around it. Like, yeah. Um, but then I ended up, yeah, when my accident happened, getting the I got um, like a cheap $400, like, you know, T5, Canon T5, and just kind of like got more into like working in a studio, how I could like control my environment in the studio and yeah. get creative and just do more like creative photo shoots in studio, which was fun because then it's like my artist network for music. They have cool projects that I can like be like, yes, my creative brain's racking. Let's do this. Let's <laughs> elevate your idea. Like, yeah. So that was all really awesome for me to have, like, and financially, like, I was working part-time, you know, like, of course, like, the, like, the accident, like, your insurance will take care of you up to, like, 20000 with, like, mm. you know, certain, like, um, like, your loss of wages and things like that, but okay. they only cover, like, so much of your actual, like, earned potential, so right. mm -hmm. I was just trying to hustle, it turned, it was a creative hustle and outlet for me, and, like, just trying to get by and like also have an outlet you know all the while still going through ot and pt yeah, right for yeah. sure yep um wow. for photographers and videographers i mean you're saying that the music connections helped you network like do you have any advice for somebody getting started out in videography or photography maybe how to utilize that i'd say just be someone's intern so that's actually mm. i got my camera as like a creative outlet and then I was actually at a wedding and got like recruited from their main photographer. I was just doing like fun behind the scenes, but we had a cool dynamic. Like I was kind of bouncing off where she needed me and just kind of help out. Um, but yeah, she was like, you want to intern for me? Took me on as like intern. So I learned just like kind of more of that world through her and mm. that company. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And was that a lot of, I mean, artist events or was it like wedding photo shoots? And... Um, she just had like wedding photo shoots and then some like branding stuff. So a little bit of everything. Right. Um, I kind of did like a little bit of boudoir. Like I tried a little bit of everything. Um, and like ultimately, I just really love like storytelling. Like mm -hmm. I love photos, but if I can't tell a story in the photos, like I feel like I did you a disservice. So I really oh. like to pre-plan and get like creative even if it's a family photo shoot like however if i'm gonna do it like on the side still i want it to be kind of like telling a story and being able to help like the client actually with like bring out the full potential of what their purpose is for uh, yeah. hiring me and stuff so. like you said elevate the idea yeah <laughs> elevate it. let's elevate the creativity yeah but get an the in potential get an internship ideally yeah, yeah. for sure i would yeah to <laughs> at least expose you to you gotta yeah. yeah i think just getting that exposure and then yeah going from there you'll meet the right people anywhere i think your network especially is like everything in any industry so just nurturing like, like going back to taking criticism too, you know, like her trying to teach me, being able to take criticism, nurturing her wanting to teach me in that relationship. Mm. She was more willing to trust me with her clientele, you right, know? So right. I think that goes with any industry, like your willingness to like be a student and a teacher, like down, the, you know, like you first got to be a student to be a teacher and a leader. So I think just my best advice to anyone wanting to learn anything is like, be able to be a student always. It never changes, even when you're a teacher, you mm. know? So That's huge. Learned. Humble and wise <laughs> words here from Gabriel <laughs> Jacob. Truly. Sure. Yeah. Um, were, I think I saw that you shot the uh, um, Indigo 
uh, Keys video. Yeah, so me and Keys. Hey, Keys, what's up? Keys what is, is in the background <laughs> over here. Um, yeah, so our Indigo Keys uh, first release was Backroads, and yeah, I filmed the video. Was that the first music video that you yeah. and yeah. edited it? And- yeah. Wow, what yep. was that like? I mean, you're just saying that you like telling a story, and yeah. it's like that's. I think we just wanted it to feel like she was just kind of walking, like you know, vibing with herself, like had a, her own story to tell, and have her be the main focus of the picture. Um, with that, yeah, I have one other video. Um, I won't. I won't announce it because I don't know when they're gonna drop it. But oh, yeah, I did oh. one other recent video, and then. Yeah, I have one meeting on Friday for another music video. So is that something you're gonna pursue? Definitely, is just part of the the <laughs> whole the whole vision, you yeah. know? Because like I want to executive produce. I want artist development. I want to be able to provide any artists that I essentially work with on production, like visuals, all of it. We're marketing. We're a team. We're a village. We gotta. It, it's all cohesive with that like goal. I would say. Yeah, so I mean, I'll do it on the side for like income purposes and like mm-hmm. helping other artists. I want to totally. help other artists. Like that's my biggest goal. But yeah, kind of like practicing the skill while helping people, and then overall bigger picture would be like to in the future have more of a structured like way of working. <laughs> totally, <laughs> to yeah. own the production company, be the yeah, executive like, producer. Yeah, yeah, brand it all under like you know a certain collective of artists and things and then have just my services be for like our collective precisely yeah the one-stop shop in-house videographers in-house graphic artists and growing that team and like just yeah storytelling writing and creative direction and stuff too that's awesome yeah you guys can check out uh media 2.8 and 2.8 collective to like watch that whole journey Mm because that's like just being born yeah Yeah. (laughs) That's yeah. very cool. We should go back and talk about some of your music, the Gabriella Jacobs. Oh song. yes, yes. For sure. The uh, the features, maybe the spots. Yes. Yeah. So as For a sure. uh, predominantly as a vocalist, I wanted okay. to ask yeah. if you are producing any of these tracks as well. But we were to, we were able to find things. I guess. Do you have a year you'd prefer to start? Oh, around? <laughs> I mean. Because of course, there's a lot of stuff I did with, like, a lot of amazing people here. Like, so it's up to you guys. Yeah, whatever. It's totally I mean, clever. let's um, conscious euphoria. Yeah, so. Just by get at you. I, yeah, get at you. I actually saw in a beat battle that Shrimp Nose put on that I was the judge of with uh, Lexi Alige actually, like, be- right before she died. Oh, actually. my gosh. So rest in peace to her. Um, Tip was also the judge, and I saw him do the beat battle, and I was like, okay, I like this. Like, so I hit him up for some, like, to work with him, yeah. and that's how we made that song. Oh, that's so um, fun. Yeah. And then, yeah, so sing- singing on a lot of these features. Yeah, so at first I was doing, like, you know, a lot of, like, I w- had solo stuff I was doing, but I like was working with the people I was like hanging out with too mm-hmm. most of the time. So like ATR um helped me record all of my music. That's mm. on SoundCloud from like any solo work to, you know, I worked with J Lap. They all lived together in Como. So like we all consistently worked like every day, just kinda like wow. chilling and then just making like random things or I'd watch them make stuff. Um yeah. so that's kind of how like all the collaborations kind of started. Yeah. Right. No one good engineers and then producers to like master the tracks and stuff are you doing the audio engineering and like production these days yeah so okay yeah so like now flipping kind of like the last year i put out my alias indigo onyx which i use for all my production yes um i don't want to blow up (laughs) y'all like i don't want to make like of course i want to make income and like make it a career and like I think making it a career is one thing, and then like wanting fame is like two different. Oh my <laughs> goodness, two you whole different it. you know definitions of success, and it's all for the person and what you want to achieve. So yeah. don't don't get me wrong. If you want all those nice things, you go get that bag. That sounds <laughs> right. amazing, you know. But for me, like yeah, I think I wanted to create an alias where I can you know, go home to my family. I can fly out to the Grammys next week and people will give me my flowers, but I'm not in the center limelight like 
where I can't go get groceries with right. my family live and live normal a normal drive. life. Yeah. So that's kind of where that came from. Vocals are for fun. Like any Gabriella Jacobs stuff is for God or for fun. And it's like I have no other intention than f- to help someone else like feel some love and like healing with like any vocal work really. And then production is like... I don't know. I just, I love it. Like, I love everything I make. And I'm like, this is my pocket. It's everything I want to do. And then setting like a goal, a realistic, attainable goal versus like, I'm just going to blow up. Everyone's going to love my music. You know, mm-hmm. I'm like, yes, let's get it. Yeah, it sounds, <laughs> sounds good. Sounds like you've got a good balance with drawing the line between being like easily findable and accessible to like help people make good music versus being like, you know, what everybody, you know, mm-hmm. the fame part of it. But <laughs> yeah, that for was sure. Very cool. Very balanced. And I'm sure keeps like you You probably feel better about achieving that mm-hmm. on a daily basis instead of, oh, I'm still not famous. Oh, I'm still not famous. Yeah. Like not putting, you know, like uh, too much pressure on like the end destination and how you get there and just like letting yourself you know, set a goal. Mm. Like, I think just setting a goal, and I don't mean that in like a rude way, but I think the best way to achieve success in any industry, again, is like setting at least some attainable goal. Like, you know, and start little. Whether I always told myself I want to perform in an arena, like growing up, like that's my goal. Like, Mm. I made it when I perform in an arena. So, like, then I got asked out of nowhere. Sorry to interrupt. We got to take a break. (laughs) Gabriel J. We'll be right back. (laughs) Oh, wow. Wow, wow. Welcome back to Dogstar. We were just talking about uh, setting realistic goals, but you were saying performing in an arena. (laughs) For Uh, sure. That that was pretty huge. Was that recently? Yeah. So um, actually, April of this last year, I uh, opened with Baby Shell and Devin Reason at uh, the Amsoul Arena in Duluth for Waka Flocka Flame and Kevin Gates. So Uh, I I DJed for them and kind of. So I sent Baby Shell some beats and he was like, do you want to DJ for me? That's literally one of I didn't even meet him until like the show was happening actually wow. so what? he literally believed in me he's like no your production's sick like i trust you with this like i want to put you on so i was like yes awesome like i can take the opportunity and i will like you know like this awesome and we had so much fun like it was an awesome opportunity so that was like always like a dream though that felt unattainable right, but like i, I always say. spoke it into the world and then it like came random so i think like yeah, don't put too much like heat on that thing. Just focus on like being happy with what you're doing. <laughs> what was that experience like? I mean, I was it one of the largest crowds you've ever performed in front yes, of? Yes, I think it was four or five thousand people. Oh, so it was gosh. almost sold out. I think we were like, yeah, basically sold out. Um, it felt pretty surreal, but honestly, like it felt like home like it felt very comfortable for me i was just like in my element like bouncing off other people's energy in the crowd and like trying to you know get them hyped for the show so i thought it was really fun it was awesome i'm really thankful for the opportunity that's cool is there more djing in your future Yes, um, I am opening uh, the Breakaway Festival at Allianz Field. Oh, that's uh, sick. Coming exciting. out in June, everybody. The lineup's dropping soon. It could be Tiesto. It could be Marshmallow. Like, I don't know who the You can't confirm or I know can't confirm or deny anybody. I'm just throwing <laughs> random people out there for real. Take that out. Like, we're you know, tagging them. We're, tagging we're taking that with a clip. grain of I'll salt. But right yeah, like, there's going to be some really cool uh, artists headlining that will drop soon. Um, if you want to grab tickets, you can use uh, code Indigo Onyx at checkout for ten percent off. So if oh, anyone's wow. interested in going, it's a silent disco as well. So Sick. all ages, bring your grand, bring your kids, bring everybody. <laughs> It'll be a great time. So <laughs> and I mean, I don't want to lift the veil too far, but how do you prepare for a DJ set? Or is it all sure. vibe in the room, and you have all your music right there, and you so, just curate it? Definitely, like, usually I want to, like, I would say, like, more, like, live curate, like, on spot. Like, FKJ, if you know who FKJ is, like, live sampling, producing one part of the song and then layering it live. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what I'd like to lean towards. 
the DJing stuff, I've just had like been blessed with some cool opportunities, but it does take some work just preparing a set and mixing and developing the production for that. That's a whole other side of production. So right, because yeah. being in charge of the auxiliary in the car is mm -hmm. not DJing no. as cocky <laughs> as some people want to say it is. No, so I mainly like. Um, the biggest thing helping me like continue to learn DJing, which I only started a year ago, actually. Kevin Gates was my first DJ show. Wow. <laughs> so we're talking like full, like, I've always been interested in it. My parents would drop me off at Guitar Center and I would mess around with that. All day. <laughs> so, you know, like it was there, but yeah, that was my first opportunity. So that gave me the ability to learn and like was something I wanted to do with production to be able to perform my own instrumentals. Yeah. So I've just been continuing to practice and practice. And then I mix like in key and then BPM, which I think is important for those looking to learn. Just mix in key and match BPM. And you'll be golden. And, be and, good to go. and are you, do you have a MIDI controller there? Are you doing live chords, live additional vocals at all? Or is that not a goal, yet, maybe? Not yet. Like, I love live performing and stuff, but we'll see, like, if that's, like, the route, like, that ends up going towards. I really want to just nurture production. Right. I right. really want to practice that craft. I am working with uh, Leica Publishing. So they're out of LA. So I do have a publisher I'm working with for more like film scores and just different sync opportunities right. that way, which that is hard work. It's not easy because you have to be versatile. Everything has to be mixed and like everything has to be ready to go TV. Mm -hmm. So I think it just you can only have so much time in the world. I work full time too. Right. <laughs> so I think I just want to focus on creating um, work and then like creating work for more like commercial use and then kind of see over time where like more live performances come into play. But That'll definitely help the executive vision, the mm -hmm. executive goal. Yeah. <laughs> For and sure. we were talking a little bit before the episode, you were saying the Indigo, Indigo Keys collab mm -hmm. that's uh, you and uh, Keys Larkin mm -hmm. um, is going to be more, again, you're kind of refocusing towards the production and then kind of doing the, like you were saying, the artist empowerment. Yeah, so I guess a quick overview, only 2.8% of female producers in or in I'm sorry let, let's take it let's take it back okay only 2.8 percent of producers in the industry are women um so that's kind of where 2.8 collective came from mm. um so the goal is to empower more women to have the resources to get into audio production which artists a lot of the time you know you want to do all of it you want to be mm -hmm. able to build your own creation from the ground up so I've had a lot of like women reach out that are looking to like learn Ableton. So like I formed 2.8 Collective, which is actually a Discord channel as well, where I'll pop in and just like cook up. And if people have questions, like I will teach anybody literally anything. So wow. if you want to join, I will give you free classes. Like I'm not going to charge for information you can find on YouTube. I'm here to just like have <laughs> cool interactions yeah. and teach people anything they want to know. Um, with that keys comes into major play like her and i ended up meeting each other at king cam wonderland and just instantly like hit it off and nice. i checked out her music on soundcloud and was like oh look at this little angel butter voice like what <laughs> oh my gosh i was like so impressed and she does you know majority of her work actually independently as well so mm. she produces on garage band and like has an app on her phone like does everything and like she even though it's on her phone and everything you guys she's chopping like she's putting it, all that work <laughs> yeah. in she's putting the work in she has the drive to do it i'm like let's go she's bouncing off me we bounce off each other so it's like i through like working with her have found inspiration of like i really want to help more with this like mm -hmm. i love being able to help you like well write like you know i'm helping her with the full production process and then strategy as far as like social media content right. like, the whole vision so with indigo keys that's my best friend we're always going to be indigo right, keys yeah. but i want her to shine as keys larkin so we're kind of dialing back like i'll still produce for her but she's out here in the world independent i want her to shine under 
who she is. So I don't want that yeah. to get lost in Indico Keys right now. But totally. we'll, we'll be doing the thing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Well, yeah, there's the, that 420 show. Now, yeah. is that going to be billed as Indigo Keys? Yeah. Or? When we're performing, oh, okay, okay. I'm sure we'll perform together unless she has like, you know, more like her solo stuff she gets produced by somebody else she wants to do mm -hmm. it will all i'll be there to help her and help her cure it however she wants me to like right. i'll back her if she wants to do a solo set yeah. whatever she needs like i'm there to support her especially like grow more in the industry that sounds awesome yeah anybody looking to team up it's 2.8 collective on instagram mm -hmm. um, and that and that show on saturday uh, april 20th at 420 shows at barrio correct yes i yep yeah, so we are still uh launching that in the next coming weeks like it will Excellent. launch here actually um but yeah that's where that will be at. Yep. Oh, that's so exciting. <laughs> yeah. I do want to get into talking about the two tracks that you brought with. For sure. So yeah, we've got about three minutes left. So okay. there's the Indigo <laughs> Keys uh, track yep. that has the music video. Yep. Uh, Backroads. Tell yeah. us a little bit about that. Yeah. So this is our first official track. Um, we curated the music video together. Both of us like directed it together. We filmed it um, nearby my house, actually. Like we used just like the resources we had. We wanted to do it. We're like, let's do it. We can do it. Got it done. Edited it. And we're like, yeah, this is going to be our first drop. Put it out into the world. And yeah, people seem to be liking the energy like that's what we're here for so we're yeah. very happy about um yeah like how receptive like the community's been to listening and just kind of like seeing what we're doing too so hey, yo, yo, yo. oh sorry y'all kicked off 2024 right yes. yeah oh yeah it was a new year's <laughs> eve yep. drop that's right yep so actually like i was with some friends new year's eve and they were just like yeah everybody let's <laughs> yes. go so that was awesome too like good village around so. yeah i was gonna ask one more question about that one i know we're running out of time sure. did you have the beat made before all the lyrics were written that one yes she did i sent her that one specifically though for her to get on and she was like yeah let's go and then wrote to the beat for that one Boom. other ones we build ground up together okay. now. oh yep. man I like that. that's so cool i can't wait to hear more stuff uh from you guys together specifically mm -hmm. um yeah. the second track you brought is in your love yep. and that's a collab mm -hmm. with forgive me i don't i don't want to say yeah the name it's wrong. chanasa broxton uh from tribe mafia so they're based out of austin right. texas um very very impeccable vocalist and like engineer he engineers all his vocals and then sends them to me and i kind of put a little you know so <laughs> uh yeah we just we make stuff like every morning though you guys we got like 30 <laughs> tracks probably Whoa. so he's someone i think when you know we're creating i'm really excited about working with him and keys because we really are just they wake up and they're like where's the beats at gab like mm -hmm. we're ready to go so people that like you know see my value and like are willing to you know give me a little i'm like let's go like so it's just been really natural especially with those two that's sweet. Um, how does it work normally? You normally uh, send, in, send in beats out? Or like, what's your preferred way to make a song? Um, I want to build minute. with the artist. I want to be a producer. I'm going to, you know, I'm not here to, I'm not a beat maker. I don't want to send you some beats and I don't need your money. I want to, yeah. let's like, you know, I want to build like more projects that are strategic and have a purpose. And then also if the artist just wants to put out stuff and like, resonates with me and puts the not just the words though because i have got a lot of people that like, like i love your beats i want to work on them but then it's ghosts you know and mm -hmm. it's probably though let's give them benefit of the doubt no equipment stuff like that but i really just want to focus in on the energy that's coming to me that's like reciprocal so mm -hmm. i don't have a specific way i'm just trying to figure it all out <laughs> as we go <laughs> well, it's, it's such a pleasure to watch the trajectory the non-stop trajectory for sure thank you i and, appreciate you guys. and it's been again it's been a pleasure to chat with you and thank you for sharing such personal details with us with fans with aspiring totally. musicians for sure well thank you guys for having me i'm happy to be here and thank you guys for watching <laughs> yeah follow gabriella jacobs at indigo underscore onyx with two x's um follow us at dog star podcast we'll see you next week Oh, wow. Turn me up in my headphones.